Hi crochet lovers, how are you? Today we're going to learn to make the basic forms for a God Sai mandala and then each one at home can begin exploring with colors. We can also try mixing one shape after the other and thus create your own mandala. So today we're going to learn to make those basic shapes and I hope you enjoy this process as much as I did. I made this one with wax thread and this other one is made with mouline thread which is the one we normally use for cross stitch patterns. Aside from the thread in all the colors we want, which is 10 or 12 colors, we'll need 4 sticks. They are normal skewers that we find at the grocery store and we just have to remove the tips. If we want bigger sticks, we can get bamboo sticks too. These mandalas or god side can be made in all sizes. We'll make small balls with the thread and we'll put them aside on the table to take the colors as the inspiration hits us. Before we begin, we'll have to cut up the tip of the sticks if they have any, and we'll mark the center with a ruler. We'll start over here with just two sticks, and we'll create a knot with the color we want to use to begin our mandala. We'll leave that knot a little bit open, and we'll pass those two sticks through that hole. We'll tighten the knot right at the center we previously marked. And to make it stronger, we have to create a double knot. Now we'll cut the excess thread so it doesn't bother us later on. And then we'll hide the rest. We're going to begin working now. We'll always start upwards and then we'll move down. That's one bow knot and we have to make four. Two, three and four. We always go upwards. We'll gather those four bow knots at the center of the sticks. We tighten them up and now we'll open the sticks and it has to look a little bit like this. And we'll see the bow knots that come from that side to this side. So what we'll do now is create four bow knots in the opposite sense. We begin up here and there we have one, two, three and four. It has to look something like this. We'll leave that thread at the bottom, below the sticks, and we'll turn it over so the long thread is at the bottom. If you are right-handed, it should be on the lower right, and on the lower left if you are left-handed. Now we'll cover those four sticks with our thread. We will begin with the first one, upwards and then down. That's the first one. We move to make the second. Over and then under. In the next one, we have that thread. So we're gonna try and hide it inside that new thread we're working with. So we just go over the stick and then under. And we just have one left, one corner. And we already created that initial diamond that is the center of our mandala. Now we just have to make that diamond bigger until it has the size we want for our project. We just have to keep covering those four sticks, over and then under. We need to be really careful and make tight bow knots. And we also need to take advantage of this moment and check that the sticks are totally perpendicular. This is the moment where we can fix it, so we need to be careful because later it will be too late. About the thread we have here, after creating bow knots over it three or four times, we can cut close to the base and keep working like we normally did without having it bother us anymore. Here I already have the ideal size for my diamond. I made about two centimeters on each stick. So we'll cut the thread on the stick we want it doesn't have to be a certain stick, we choose wherever we want. And here we'll create a knot, right over the stick, just like this. We tie it and set it aside. It has to be very close together to the rest of the diamond and we cut it so it doesn't bother us. We'll create another diamond in the exact same size. Remember, these mandalas have eight tips, so we need two diamonds to achieve the eight tips. We'll bring in a new color now. Whenever we want to do so, we'll start with another stick. 
Not in the one where we finished the previous shape, so we don't have too many extra threads in one stick. We'll just create a double normal knot. We push it up with the rest of the mandala, cut it a little so it doesn't bother us a lot, and that's it. We have our new color in. We'll set our sticks so that all the tips have the same distance between them, and we'll cover those A sticks now. We'll do the same thing we did for the diamonds, but now we have eight tips. So now we just start. And we go over and under. We move to the next one, where we have the final thread. Don't forget to hide that thread. Maybe that's the most boring part, but it's quickly done, so it's okay. And there are also some people that leave the thread at the back, and then they glue them down with hot glue. So that's also possible. Now we cover the sticks, notice that I haven't let go of the center, I can work up until half the mandala like this. Now we have to turn, so we hold it down from the other side and we keep working, over and under, over and under. And that's it, we created the first row. Now is the time to fix everything, to have the eight tips at the same distance. And we continue. The second row is much easier because everything is tightened down. So we just need to worry about creating the bow nuts. Covering the sticks from the top and we'll just keep growing. This shape is called the wheel. I've created my wheel. It's about one centimeter wide. You can make it as wide as you want. And now we'll finish it off. Remember, we make a knot and cut a little of the extra thread so it doesn't bother us too much. Now we'll bring in a new color. Remember to bring it in a different stick. And with this color, we'll keep making the same wheel. This is done to show you we can change colors anytime in any of the shapes I'm going to show you today. We can change colors as many times as we want. And now, without changing the thread, I'll show you how to make the tips, which is another shape. For the tips, we create a knot over the whole stick. We go over and finish at the top two. And then we go to the opposite stick. We go over, under, and over again. And we go back to the opposite stick, which is where we just worked on. We go over, under, and over again. And then we go to the opposite stick. And those are the tips. We go over the stick entirely, and then we move to the opposite side, and we do the exact same. That way, the tips will grow on the two opposite sides. And this is how it looks from the back. Remember, we cover completely the stick we're working on, and then we go to the other side and cover it completely too. When our tip has the size we want, we can begin making the tips on the other sticks. So we can use the same color if we want to make them equal. And we just turn and set the thread at the tip where it can be seen least. Generally, it will be the one next to the opposite stick from where we were working on. So we set the thread there, cover this new stick completely, and we go to the opposite stick from the back. And then we start with the new set of tips. We cover it completely, go back from the back to the opposite stick, cover completely, and that's how the second set of tips will grow. When we get to the ideal length, we change sticks again. We look for the other stick, where our thread is almost invisible from the front, and we just start over. We cover completely and move to the opposite stick from the back. And so on until we complete all the corners that have those tips. Another option is to make each pair of tips in a different color. And when we finish our pair of tips, for me they are blue, we close it off with a knot and we'll set the new color in the next stick or whatever we want. That way we'll begin building with our colors. Double knot and we go straight to the opposite stick. We cover it completely. 
and once again from the back to the opposite stick where the knot is. Don't forget to hide the threads and that's how this tip is in another color and it will grow too. It's the same as the others, we only change the color of the thread. That's how it looks. I'll finish the other tips alternating these colors and I'll see you in a little bit. I'm showing you another one I made with the tips in the same color and a little bit longer. Perfect, that's how my tips ended up. I alternated colors, I changed the thread every time I need it. And that's how it looks from the back. In the other mandala, besides making them in yellow, I made also these small blue tips. Simply after finishing the tips in yellow, I tied a blue thread and kept making tips at the yellow ones. Here you can see it clearly. Underneath it's the yellow thread and on top is the blue one. But in the one we're making, we'll leave it like this. Just one row of tips. And now, we'll make a wheel from the back that shows a bit more the shape of the sticks. So we set the new thread with the double knot and we begin. We'll go over each stick but now we won't do it from the front like we always did. Instead we'll do it from the back of the stick. We cover it completely and move to the next one. From the back and to the next one. Don't forget to hide those threads. There we go. From the back. The bad thing about making tips in different colors is that we have to camouflage a lot of threads. But it doesn't matter, we advance little by little. We have gone all the way around, but the only way to make this shape noticeable is by making more rows. So we can see how it showcases the stick instead of the first wheel that kind of hit it before. So we'll learn now to make a square. To do so, we tie the new thread with the double knot. We skip the first stick from behind and in the next one we'll go over from the front and the top. Like this. The thread has to go behind what we've done. We skip the next stick from underneath and in the next one we go over completely. We skip the following one. And the next one is covered completely. And lastly, to close it up, we skip the next one and we completely cover the last one. Don't forget to hide those threads. And those are the four corners of our square. These four corners will begin to pop up as we continue. You'll see how pretty it looks. So we just keep repeating the process and we continue going like this. And that's how the square looks. We make it as thick as we want with that color. Now what we'll do is make another square in the stitches that don't have any square parts now. So we tie the thread with the double knot and we start again. We skip the first stick, we go under it and ignore it, and we cover the next one completely. We skip the next one from underneath and cover the following one completely. We skip the next one from underneath and cover the following one completely. And that's the new square. The four tips are ready and now we just have to keep making it bigger. So this is how those intertwined squares look and I really think that it's a beautiful shape. Now what we'll make are the stars. They create a tip that's flatter and a little bit chunkier than a normal tip shape we made at the beginning. And they create the shape of a star at the bottom. So we bring in the new thread with a double knot. And now we skip two sticks instead of one. We do that and in the third one we'll go over completely. We skip one and two. And in the third one, we cover completely. We skip one, we skip two, and we cover the third one. Eventually, we'll end up working in the same corners we worked before. The star takes a little longer to grow. And that's how the tips look. Like I said, they are flatter than the ones we made first. And at the back, we have to see the shape of a star.
And what I'll do now is bring in a new color to make these tips in two colors. So we tie it up and keep doing the same. We skip two sticks from underneath and we cover the third one. We skip two sticks from underneath and cover the third one. And that's how the tips in two colors look. Like I said before, we can change colors as many times as we want. And that's it, we learned all the shapes that we had to learn for the first class. With the remaining stick we have, each one can decide what to make, more squares, wheels or anything else. We can even finish it as a star. For example, this one is finished by making a wheel at the front, a normal wheel. And when I was about to finish, I changed colors, chose a darker color and created this small rose which is just rolling the thread up when you get to the stick. And then you move to the next stick. Roll it, roll it, roll it, and that's how you make the rolls. But a lot of people use wooden beads or something shiny. Each person can use whatever the inspiration dictates. And those are the basic shapes. I'm sure that each person's intuition will help them create gorgeous mandalas. See you soon. Have fun, crochet lovers.